bird night tonight, and uh, our guest speaker is a very, very busy man. Uh, he uh, is on, I don't know if the fifth book is out, he has four books out, and he's working on number five, uh, soon to be published. Uh, he still writes for, writes columns for the Eau Claire Leader Telegram, uh, Birdwatcher Magazine. Uh, he's worked in Eau Claire Television and has been nominated for 20 Emmy Awards, uh, the first <coughs> journalist in Eau Claire has been to win both an Emmy and an Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Journalism. Um, he's worked with John Peets. Some of you are probably familiar with the uh, Birds, Birds, Birds CD put out um, by John Peets. He worked with him on that. He also co uh, produces uh, for the Wisconsin Society of Ornithology uh, their Bird, uh, C, Bird TV, which has been in the series on, on birds in Wisconsin. Um, he is currently the president of the Gaylord Nelson Audubon Society. Um, he's also done four of the 92 breeding bird surveys in Wisconsin. Are you still doing them? Or are you, two of them. You're still doing two. Okay, excellent. And he's been all over North America in the pursuit of birds. Um, I thought it was interesting you mentioned that it took a while to find your favorite bird, uh, the small-tailed kite. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful bird. So, uh, I will stop chatting here and make room for our guest, Steve Fleshkow. Thank you for inviting me. Hello, everybody. There are probably a million ways you can add birds to your life. Uh, we're going to make it simple, and I'm going to give you 101 or so suggestions for how to add birds to your life tonight, because the million, you can't do that in our program. That's a lifetime benefit. <laughs> Yes, I am. I'll try. It's always <laughs> double just, switches. You never know which ones are on. Let's see if this one works. With all of my talks, Perfect. I offer a money back guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't laugh at at least one joke, if you aren't entertained by the slides, or don't learn one new thing, you get your money back. <laughs> and since some of you laughed, I think you took care of about maybe a third of the crowd there. Right? <laughs> That's good. That's good. We're going to go. We're going to start the countdown. First thing you have to do, open up your life and your mind to birds. You have to think like a bird sometimes. Get up before dawn, and not just up, but out while the grass is still wet, even before the sun is awake. Be the only one out there. You have to start your day with an amophilico. <laughs> you know what the amophilico is, right? Please raise your right hand or put it over your heart at this point. All right? And you know by memory, so of course you can just recite it. Now go ahead. <laughs> All right, I'll do it with you. Repeat after me, please. There is a place in my heart. There is a place in my heart. Reserved just for birds. Reserved just for birds. Nearest the seed grinding gizzard. Nearest the seed grinding gizzard. Nearest the unidirectional and highly efficient lungs. Nearest the lungs. Nearest the proventriculus. Nearest the proventriculus. We'll talk about that later. Nearest the mysterious compass in my head. Nearest the mysterious compass in my head. Where joy springs full throated. Where joy springs full throated. Like the song of the winter wren. Like the song of the winter wren. It nests in me each summer. It nests in me each summer. Flies south each autumn. Flies south each autumn. Over winters in the tropics. Over winters in the tropics. And Sally's forth again comes spring. Sally's forth again comes spring. To breathe life into the woods. To breathe life into the woods. And the prairies. And the prairies. And the marshes. And the marshes. I go glass up. I go glass up. Favorite bird guide in hand. Favorite bird guide in hand. In khaki. In khaki. Camel. Camel. Or earth tones. Or earth tones. But never red or white. But never red or white. Fierce as a merlin, as a broodmother, as a chickadee, defender of all things feathered. So help me bird. So help me bird. Now you do have committed the memory. There are many things we use illusions to talk about birds, illusions to show off a little preen, strap your stuff. A little trivia question we'll have more later, but Fill in, this, fill in the blank here. A peacock raises its blank feathers 
in its courtship display. What is the answer there? A peacock raises its flame feathers in its courtship display. No, not its tail. That's a trick question. Anybody know? These are its back feathers. Its tail is under there. It's just a dull, long thing. But it's not raising its tail. That's down below. All we ever see is a raised back feather. A little bit of bird trivia to take us forward. Then nap the middle of the day away. <laughs> Keep time by the birds. Now, I don't just mean the 24-hour clock. I'm talking about the bird clock. Anybody have one of these Audubon clocks at home? Yes. Well, I've got three of them. I've got one downstairs. One upstairs. <laughs> and i got another one on the way. It's the game bird clock. I just thought that looked cool. So at my house, downstairs, if it's noon, we call noon, it's great horn owl clock. And if it's noon upstairs, it's some Canada clock. <laughs> and these are great. If you don't have one of these things, you know, about September, a bird song, is, is pretty much gone. You hear some chirps and some, you know, uh, things, white throated sparrows coming through in the backyard. But when you have a summer tanager going off in your house at noon in the winter, it just, it brightens the heart and soul. Like we were talking about that epithelic oil. And the purple martin at 2 o'clock, one of my favorite birds. Uh, so this thing, again, you know, I know when I wake up and I get out of bed generally, it's, you know, Carolina around o'clock. <laughs> when I hear the birds sing, if I hear the bluebirds sing, I thought, oh my gosh, I've overslept. <laughs> I hope to goodness this isn't a real flamingo that sacrificed itself for this woman's hand, <laughs> as they did in the early 1900s. Collect up duck stamps. Now, this is a great way to raise money. Of course, everybody knows you buy duck stamps. That goes directly to National Wildlife Refuge Support, and it helps support <coughs> habitat not only for ducks, but for leconce sparrows, and for shorebirds, and for herons and other birds. Mm -hmm. These are fantastic. Why would anybody who's a bird watcher put anything but a bird stamp on there? <laughs> Why would you put some of those ugly stamps? Why would you put a Disney stamp on there when you can put one of these beauties on there? And by the way, these are still available at the post office. They're going fast, though. Uh, the post office cycles through its designs and then it deserts them, and the only way you can get them is by buying them through a stamp vendor for like three times the cost. So they are still at cost right now in the post office. Time to stock up for your Christmas card. Dedicate your ringtone to the birds. Okay. Anybody here have a cell phone? Yeah. 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 Oh, darn, I think I left mine in the car. So if you, if you did dial it. Yep, it won't work. Uh, my ringtone is a purple marker, and it's really easy to do. All you have to do is you find, you go to somewhere like Dino Canton, you download their song, and it's in an MP3 file. You can either drag it right to your computer or into your iTunes file, and then plug your phone in, and you can see it and drag it to your phone. <coughs> phone shows up. So it's really easy to make your, your dial tone a bird song tone. So I actually have a different bird song for everybody in my family. So when the bird song rings, I know who's calling. Uh, the world is my sister, for example. Get your own bird playing cards. These are designed by Stan Kulich. You know, he's a very uh, enterprising author. He writes a lot of books. But these books, these cards are amazing. A Birds in the Northwest one I happen to have here, but I have several sets. You remember back when you were a kid, and one of the things that attracted me to bird watching and the nature in general is the collectability of it. I was attracted to the imagery, the color, but there was always like on a cereal box, there were little animal heads that you could cut out and fold them around into three-dimensional animal heads. And there were license plates in the honeycomb box, and there were just different cards that you could collect. And so these take me back to my childhood, you know, when you have a card that every card has a different bird on it. It's a, it's a collectability to it. And that's the thing about birds. There is a, not an unlimited amount of birds out there. And they are not overwhelming in that regard. But they're also so beautiful that when you put them on something like a playing card or an image, any kind we're going to talk about later here, they are just almost like you could hold them in your hand and instead of seeing the bird through a binocular or hoping it shows up to visibility, you have that bird you know, right there, right where you can hold on to it and see it all the time. And so the beautiful imagery of these put into a playing card is another extension of that, which I think is <coughs> He has all sets, the southeast of the U.S., the southwest of the U.S., Wisconsin, the Midwest. You can collect any set of cards you want. I'm, 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 I've got three of them so far, and I'm working my way down the list. There are European cards as well. This is a poster that I helped design. You see around the outside uh, all these names of photographers from around the state. But this is uh, hanging in my basement uh, as part of my art in my basement. So, Pretty colors, huh? Yes. Number 14. All right, it's right in your backyard. How many people here have ever been to the birds in our exhibit? Raise your hand up. Yeah, yeah, I expect so. If you haven't been, this is one of those things that
that a Wisconsin native should never have missed in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. This thing is fantastic. Every year it goes on in the fall for a couple months, and you stop in and the best bird art in the world is there, including art from this guy, Robert Bates. You ever heard of Robert Bates? Yeah. yeah, one of the best wildlife artists in the world. I happened to meet him and interview him for my job as a journalist. He's a singer journalist, but he does beautiful work. Uh, and, and he's always there. Every year you will see a Robert Bateman in this place, one of my favorites, the uh, white throat swims being pursued by a pair of in the mountains. I used to work in the mountains, so that brings home a lot of memory. And I also had the great uh, pleasure of meeting Robert Bateman um, back in the, early, in the early 90s, 1990. I met him and interviewed him here at the Birds and Art Group when he was a keynote speaker. So you can always meet Famous artists, the Tom Schultz of the world are there. And, you know, all these other, Owen Brownie in his time was there too, of course. So all the great bird artists. Another one, purchase a bird calendar. Really easy to do. This one here, you see this guy, the bird sounds calendar. Unfortunately, they no longer make it. This was great, it had little buttons on it. And whenever you open it up, you push the button for the bird and it would sing. There's a little battery on it. So not only do you have the image of the bird, but you have the song. So again, it's a great way to practice birds. <coughs> And to me, practicing bird song is how you get good at bird song. Uh, and, and you take it, when spring comes, you're already warmed up. You've been practicing all year. One of my favorite calendars is this one. It's issued by the Barataria Terrabon National Estuary Program, or the NT, or BTNEP for short. They release one of these calendars every year on a different set of birds. You see the sparrows, the warblers, the raptors, that was the general one. This year's is on ducks, and I get it for free. They send it to me for free. All I have to do is contact them. I'm going to hand you a sheet with contact information. You send them an email or a letter, and you say, I love your calendar. Would you please send it to me? They ship it to me every year free, and I get these beautiful images of birds to put up on my kitchen wall. Designate a bird a day <laughs> each day of the year. What would today be, you think? <coughs> October 21st. Huh? Mm -hmm. You can pick your child, your call. Oh, how about this one? Anybody know what this is? Let's make this the bird of the day. Anybody ever been to India? Right, this is a crimson sunbird, and it is a bird from India. You'll never see it here at Stevens Point. But to study the birds of the world is one of the things um, you can do. Any research fascinating bird facts, like this one. All right? Everybody see the heron, the great blue heron here? Mm -hmm. All right. Boy, that bird has a long leg, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. No, no. Again, let's get out of the world of illusion and let's talk about real scientific facts. You see, what we see here, we say, oh, that bird has a long leg. That is not its leg, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the bird's foot. That's its ankle, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So what we see a heron standing on is really its tiptoe. And its foot is straight up vertical. And its leg is really only the small part you're seeing here, and the knee <coughs> is hidden up in the feathers. And there's another bone that goes back in, and it's the thigh bone. So when we see this, of course, we say, oh, that bird is long-legged. It's actually long-footed. <laughs> Visit as many wildlife sanctuaries, national wildlife refuges, or national parks as you are physically able. I took this picture this summer. It is rare to get a picture of this mountain. And hallelujah, it's not called, not named after an Ohio <laughs> senator anymore. It's now named after the Athabascan. It was originally uh, called Denali. Denali. That's what it's called now. And that's uh, very rare to see that mountain yeah. without clouds in front of it in Alaska. Yeah. This is me this summer hiking. Uh, my son and I were in the wilderness there. This day, I got a life bird. One life bird on my trip to Alaska. I'll talk about that later. I also came face to face with my first ever grizzly bear while hiking in the wilderness. I worked in two national parks, Glacier and Yellowstone, and never saw a grizzly bear because I was always so careful. And I have hiked 58 parks and never come into a grizzly bear. And my son and I are walking on this steep slope in the middle of this wilderness on a mountain off to the right, on a slope. And he says to me, we're, we're, it's a 45 degree angle, we're, we're traversing it, and so I'm being very careful because if I lose my step, I'm going to roll down the hill. And he says, Gee, Dad, this is the kind of hill that grizzly bears would be on. It's sunny, there are blueberries everywhere. And I go, honestly, David, if we don't see a grizzly bear today, I'm going to disappoint. I look up and I go, go! Oh! <laughs> My God, there's a grizzly bear. He goes, where? And it's right there, 50 yards in front of us, standing there looking at us. 
<laughs> and we both do this thing where we're trained, you know, like you put your hands up and you look bigger and we start backing away. And we back away to 100 yards where we feel a little bit safer and still just looking at us, sniffing the air, looking at us. And we start, start to take a few pictures and then eventually just turned around and waddled off another 200 yards until it was 300 yards away and just ignored us, completely ignored us and kept eating berries. I also got stung eight times when I walked under a hornet nest when I was going through the thick alder bushes coming down from that. So what a day. I'm with my son in the wilderness, I'm seeing merlins and willow ptarmigans and life birds and grizzly bears and uh, getting stung by hornets. What a great day. <laughs> this, of course, is paradise. If you've ever been to southeast Arizona, this is Cave Creek Canyon, outside of the portal. One of the best places in the world you can go. And this is what it looks like when you're the first one up on Angel Wing in Zion National Park. This is a self-timer, the camera taking it up, if I'm posing. And this is handheld, this is a selfie. You had to start out in the dark in mountain lion country to get to the top. These are my top 20 birding refuges. And I won't go down the whole list, but you notice it's top Santa Ana in South Texas. Wow, what a place to go. I was there last winter for the first time since 1989. I'd love to go there every year. Salt and Sea, California, number two. Number three, how many people have ever been to Quivira National Wildlife Refuge in Kansas? I see two hands up over here. Amazing, three, all right. Amazing habitat, especially for shorebirds. It's right near Cheyenne Bottoms. Uh, you can go to this place in the spring and be overwhelmed by uh, fantastic birds. So, not many people have heard of it, Central Kansas. Oh, it's Gaydell Apache, how many people have been there? A few, yeah. So this is beautiful refuge too in New Mexico. And down the list. Uh, Wisconsin has a couple great ones on there. I like uh, Trempolo, even better than I like Oregon. Top 10 national parks for birding. National parks are tough, and I've worked in three of them. I worked in Glacier, like I said, in Yellowstone, and, and Big Bend. Uh, but they're tough. Dry Tortugas, how many people have ever gone to Dry Tortugas National Park? Right here. Ken, if you've never taken this place, I'll make it back to. If you've never seen this place, you take a ferry from Key West, you ride for two and a half hours over the blue water with flying fish and sea turtles below you. And then when you get off at this little garden key, there's an old fort there. And the birds have landed there on their way from Cuba or wherever they're coming from. And they're all sitting there in these trees in this grove, this old orchard in the middle of this fort. And you walk around and you can camp there. You can camp for three days. There's no water, you've got to bring your own. But you can camp right on the island with the birds if you like. Or you can get off the ferry and get back on later in the day. And it is an amazing bird destination. And I rank it better than the Chiricahua, <coughs> even because it's such an immersion experience. It's just a great experience. This is a group that I hiked and visited Costa Rica with uh, a couple years ago, 20, or uh, three years ago, 2012. You see me in the back corner there. Everybody's happy. And I'm going to talk a little bit about guides here. I, I've hired four guides. Um, this guy, Luis Cuquinones is a guy um, who I hired out of, in the Yucatan Peninsula in Quintana Roo, out of Cancun. And I've hired him three times now. I know him like a friend. He's very good. He often will go with his uh, nephew, but he'll take you out for the day. That's Louis. Donald Anthony, who I went with in St. Lucia, another very knowledgeable guy. Roy Orozco, Central South um, Costa Rica. And the best of all, Lito Castro, who I went to Osa Peninsula with in Costa Rica. This guy was amazing. He knew every bird by sound and sight. And I mean, I've talked to, I've been with guides, and with Louis, for example, he's really good with the birds in the jungle. But with shorebirds, I know shorebirds, and so I was correcting him. And so Nito would be the fastest guy. I've never seen a guy set up a scope pass. So he's going to be like, there'd be an Oriole in the tree, and he'd be like, it's in the scope. <laughs> Just like that every time. Oh, there's a warbler up there? Oh, it's in the scope. <laughs> that quick. <laughs> and so he, he move it, he constantly be on, on top of the birds. And so I've learned when you hire a guy, which is a very good thing to do, $100 a day in most cases or so, <clears throat> you just stick close to the guy and you follow him. But I also like to study, and that's another thing you do. When you go on any trip, you study the birds. You get a bird guide in the area and you study. So that, when the guy says, oh, there's a yellow green very up that you're saying, oh, what does that look like? No, you're saying, I know exactly what that looks like. There he is. Wow, a yellow green very up. And so all these kinds of uh, experiences are, are richer for having studied. Help conduct a breeding bird survey, a Christmas bird count. Varies. One is hard. The breeding bird survey you have to kind of apply for and you have to have a good ear. Christmas bird counts, anybody can participate in and they're a great way to get involved. And uh, you should certainly do those if you have. 
Greenbird House, of course, going on. It's a big deal in Wisconsin. We're, we're in, the, in the first year of it. We've got four to go. This is a great participatory citizen science event. What you see in the picture here is our Bird City event, our Migratory Bird Day event. It's called Welcome Back Bird Day. And what we do is we, we have five big sit circles established in the city of Eau Claire. They're all, they're all 15 feet across. And we put a bird expert in each one for 12 hours on, on the given day. And anybody can drop in. And we count all the birds we can see from the circles in those five different spots, the very advantageous spots in Eau Claire. And then the first year we did, we had 102 species between the five circles. Last year wasn't quite as good, but it was still fun. It was a beautiful day. And so Jeff Henry on the right started this little spot overlooking Dell's Pond. And he has a little bench, and he's one of the most gracious and welcoming people I've ever seen. Everybody comes along, kids, he's inviting them in and getting them to look at birds. Great Wisconsin Birdathon is another event. This raises money for all these important bird initiatives. That's its purpose. You know, we got bird, important bird areas, and we want to protect Kirtland's warblers, and, and all these things we want to do. How do those people get money? Well, Great Birdathon is one of those ways to do it. My team is called the Chippewa Valley Titmouse Cateers. <laughs> <laughs> and I have my shirt, Stevens Point, and you guys have all you have a team of your own, or several of your own, too. But I know I noticed Ken is wearing his Bird City t-shirt. I'm very proud of the sign. I helped get this established. Bird City is a very, very good idea for PR. Mm -hmm. right? What it tells people is that birds are important to a community. They add to the quality of life. And that might seem symbolic, and it is, but it's important that people realize that birds do add to our life. And so that's what Bird City does. And so to become a bird city is, uh, is grab the attention of people. <laughs> I love to camp with birds. This, I took this picture this spring in the Cibola, Cibola, I guess Crossway properly says, Cibola National Forest in New Mexico. It's a western bluebird. This is me camping in Dry Tortuga, sharing a picnic table with a pair there. This is the black and white warbler that shared my cup of water while I was there. <laughs> These are the ruddy turnstones that shared my picnic table when I was there. <laughs> and the birds are literally that close. You put up a little drip bath, and you've got summer tanagers and hooded warblers and Kentucky warblers right there in camp. that are also tired from flying across the water that they land at your feet. Mm. And this is my sleeping out. My, my outfit for the Guadalupe Mountains National Park. I went backpacking last year. That's, it. That's bag and tent. What you see here is a bivy. This is, this is a great, amazing invention here. My sleeping bag weighs a pound and a half, or my tent weighs a pound and a half, and it zips up over my head if it rains, like a coffin. <laughs> this is what it looks like when it's folded up. A pound and a half. And so it's really great for backpacking. Now, all you got to do when you zip it up, it's waterproof. And it's amazing because you wouldn't think it would work, but you just leave a little hole by your face on the side, and you can breathe fresh air through it while it's pouring on you. <laughs> and so I wouldn't want to do this seven nights in a row, but in case of emergency and dry habitats like desert where you're not, it's not really going to rain, uh, these are very handy to have. So my little inflatable, sorry, foldable pillow. <laughs> this is my son David, who is a scientist in the Valley National Park. We were this spring pack rafting on a lake in Alaska. Get this, it's completely socked in by fog. We can't see a thing, so we drifted for about 15 minutes in the middle of the lake in fog. That was it. But we could hear red-throated loons and common loons all around us calling in that lake. And when, when the fog finally uh, cleared, we had arctic terns as well. Uh, you can bird from a car. <laughs> and this is, I'm not kidding about this. I play a game. I have a list. I'm a big lister. Birds ID at highway speed. <laughs> 45 miles or greater, it has to be, right? And I have identified 252 species thus far. <laughs> These are some of them, including, you can see here, the pale vented pigeon, scarlet macaw, uh, gull bill tern, uh, black catbird, and, uh, you know, things that are from very small to very big. Uh, Yucatan jays on that list, anything I've seen at all. But the, here's what's interesting about this, and it's going to be hard to see. Yeah, that's too hard to see. But the eye is an amazing thing, and the body is an amazing thing. We tell people not to text when they drive. Are there any driver instructors in here, driving instructors in the room? <laughs> Good, I'll think of <laughs> Because when I say these kinds of things, you know, I'm bird watching from the car, I really am. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention, but I have a really good uh, focus, and I'm a, I'm a volleyball ref, so I have to watch a volleyball hit the ground and see if it's in or out. I have to watch hand, make sure they're hitting it correctly. You ever, you ever tried this game? You took your, take your hand and put it in front of your face. Just like this. 
put about a foot in front of your face. Now look at it. Now look up at the screen and look at your hand. Your eye focuses almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Now if you were to do this, you take your eye, you look around the room somewhere, and you go, one, one thousand, right? And your hands are on the wheel. It is so easy to see a bird flying across. Mm -hmm. I give myself three seconds safely of looking out the window, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, and I'm still good to drive. Five, five, one thousand is starting to push a little bit. <laughs> but there are times when, you know, that's what it takes sometimes. But uh, I am, I'm trying to be careful at the same time. But what I find is some of these birds are actually identified by sound. I have birds on here like Matonatory Warbler or Acadian Flycatcher because I'm driving along at 45 miles an hour. If you've ever been in a country where Acadian Flycatchers are really common, that pit of seat is really loud. You can hear it from the car. And Pathology Warblers, too, in, in habits that are white Iberio, these real small birds when they're singing, uh, Northern Terriola, you can hear them and you can identify them from the car, too, so they're on my list. But I have a lot of this very anal about that, but I love the games. Or you can drive more slowly and check every bird. This is a bird I photographed, a yellow-billed magpie in Central California, from out the car window, stopped. <laughs> And a ferruginous hawk. Mm -hmm. This is in the Rita Blanca National Grasslands in the Panhandle of Texas. Mm -hmm. And an of falcon mm -hmm. in Laguna Escosa in Texas. Mm -hmm. That just happened to be sitting there when I pulled up. Now, this is one of those moments, if, if you're a birdie, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! <laughs> it's an Aplomato falcon! Where's my camera? Mm -hmm. And it's still sitting there. Mm -hmm. And the cap is on. <laughs> and then I can't get the exposure right. Oh my god, stay there, stay there, stay there. <laughs> I had a kestrel at Quivira. I had, had a hard time getting a kestrel, a picture of kestrels, because they don't keep flying away. Well, I pull the car up. I see one on a fence post about car level. And I pull up, and it's right where Larry is here, up my car. So I take my 400 meter lens, I'm just snapping away, and just, it's just looking at me. <laughs> and so I've got this full range of my face, yeah, actually, so later in. You know, take in a state burning in nature trail. On right here, Central Wisconsin, you helped set it up. And this is really important. This is important. If you really are dedicated, this is how you measure how dedicated you are. I plan a trip so that everybody's happy. My wife, she swears she's not a bird. And we'll talk more about that. But when we plan a trip, my wife likes culture and shopping and dining, all those things. Me, I don't care about any of them. I just want to see birds. And so we plan a trip. It's got everything. So in the morning, I will usually get out and do my bird watching and then come back and meet her for breakfast or for lunch and then do the rest of the day as a dutiful husband where we take in the culture and the shopping and the dining and that way everybody's happy. <laughs> this is in Zihuatanejo, Mexico. I'm looking at shorebirds in a drainage canal. My wife is snapping this picture. <clears throat> this is on the back of a Deb Shearwater pelagic trip out of Bodega Bay. Mm. This, I look happy, right? <laughs> that is because in those trees behind me, those avocado trees behind me, there are resplendent quetzals mm -hmm. flying around and they're eating the avocado. That's why I look so happy. That was good in the Tala in the Talamancas of Costa Rica. This is Hawk Mountain, Pennsylvania. They spent hawk watching there. This is me again, very happy. I'm on Resurrection Bay out of Seward in Alaska on a pelagic trip here. And this is what it looked like out the back of the boat. Now, it's hard to see this, but these are 12-foot swells. And this is just before the captain had to turn around and go back because he couldn't cra cra cross the open passage to get around to the uh, fjord in, in behind me because it was too rough. Uh, I had taken a sc scopalamine patch. Otherwise, my stomach wouldn't have been able to handle it. <laughs> Feed birds, we all know that. It's a great way to get to know them. But it's just important to water birds. It's very important to have water birds in their tracks. Planting for birds, hummingbird plants are very important. We need the birds in shelter, they need food. This is my backyard. It looks a little like Costa Rica. And I've got what I'm, I'm working on here this summer. I'm working on my little masonry project. I built this little walkway through here, and then I was building a little hammock pad for my wife. These are actually raspberries back here. Blueberry over here, strawberries around the other side. Very little they are, 75 feet on the side, but it's a sanctuary. Put a bluebird, wren, or martin house. Make nest platforms or tie sticks in your awning. Now, you guys remember when house stitches were, were not in Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. 
about 1990 or so, they came into the state. And so in the early 90s, I bought my house, the current house I live in, in 93, and house stitches were just coming in to Eau Claire. And so we had awnings, and I tied sticks across the corners. And at one point, I had five awnings. At one point, I could stand in my living room and look at four windows and see four different house pinch nests <laughs> in those awnings. Wow. And so I kept a list of fledgings, and we fledged 93 house finches oh. until a very smart blue jay discovered that if you flew up into those awnings, you could chip the nest and then eat the fledgling. Oh. And, the oh. and then after that, it was forget it. The blue, blue jay would check back every few weeks and mm -hmm. take every bird that it could, and we never had another fledgling again. So I ended up taking the awnings down and never did it again. But raise up a family of birds. Oh, here is Julie. I am not a bird wife. She loves to tell me that. But you know, once in a while, you catch her, the proof says otherwise. And she'll be looking at this eagle nest and this scope, and then she'll turn and say, don't take a picture. I'm not a bird. She'll see a, a heron swallowing a fish whole and watching it like in a peristalsis moving down his throat and say, oh, that is so cool. But I'm not a bird. <laughs> what is a birder then? <laughs> Raise up a family of birds. I got one boy, he couldn't care less about birds, but he loves to backpack with me. That's the same difference. The other one is actually a scientist who studies uh, nature and sound. So, Name your children after birds. <laughs> well, you may know somebody named Peter. <laughs> Meadowlark Lemon, that's the name of somebody. He was a basketball player who did tricks for the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, we have an Ardea. Oh, really? Yeah. Who named her that? That's Ellen's granddaughter. Ardea. That's a heron genus, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, oh, that's pretty. She came out squawking like a heron. <laughs> Larry says she came out squawking like a heron. <laughs> This is in St. Lucia, and this bird that you see here is a lesser Antillian bullfinch. Now, when you're in St. Lucia, you might as well set an extra place at the table because they say don't feed the wildlife. They come and beg, and, and, and so I just I just started making a place, and, and, off, and oh, instead of one croissant, I would order two. <laughs> oh, let's see if we make this work. I have some video. I actually have produced some videos. I produced actually uh, hundreds of videos. I'm in the dark. Let's see if you pull it off. And I'm going to see if I can play this for you. Make it tricky. Oh, we went offline, huh? Go refresh. Uh, I did a story just to tell you, Alan Bob, this guy uh, in the area of Eau Claire, south of Eau Claire, had a rough grouse that would come to visit him. And he, what he did, he has this, this bluff outside his home in Maxville, south of Durant. And he would bring this chugging engine of this ATV along, and the grouse would hear this chug, 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 and mistake it for the drumming of a drum. <laughs> and it would come running out, and he called it, he called it Bob. He called the grouse Bob. And he, he would talk to it. It's the cutest thing. He talks to it like, it like it's his pet. And so we know in science that that's not what's going on there. The bird is not being friendly. It's being aggressive. It's defending its territory. And so it's coming out to challenge what it believes is another male grouse. But Al here, the guy in the story, is talking to the bird. And it climbs up on his ATV and s s perches on his steering wheel. And the whole time he's talking to it. So it was an Emmy-nominated story. I'm, I'm sorry, you can't see it. List all the sports teams named after birds. Can you do it? Thirteen of them. Twelve. One of them is in the uh, uh, American Conference, American League playoffs, right? Blue Jay. Dedicate your next home run to the bird. Participate in the World Series of Birding. Most of us will never do this. This is a big league thing. They do this uh, to see how many birds they can see. The, the curious thing about this picture is, do you know who these people are? This is really fun. Right? You might not know Bill Boyle. He's, he's a famous name in ornithology. Or Pete Bekinski. But you ever heard of Pete Dunn? Yeah. Or <laughs> David Sibley? Boring, guys. This is 1983. Look at David <laughs> Allen Sibley here as a kid. It's a 
long hair here. And he was part of a, a World Series of Birding team in the first year it was done in 83. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think this scope is mounted to the top of the car. And they must, I don't know if they have a hole in here, but I think it's actually mounted to the top of the car. Unless it's sitting up there, but I can't tell. Collect for trivia, play avian pursuit. I got some. I actually do this thing as a game. Uh, we did it at the Birds, Blum, Birds, Bugs, and Blooms Fest. And uh, let's try one here. Oh, here we go. What's the most common state bird? Anybody know? Cardinal is correct. You know how many states? A lot. Many. I know Illinois. Cardinal is the state for seven states. Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina. You know what's second? Robin. No. Robin. What's this, what, what state birds have? What states have a robin for state bird? You know. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Who else? There are three. And you know who else has them? Eastern bluebird. Eastern bluebird is big. I think there are three. But Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Massachusetts. But there are three. Are Connecticut. Connecticut. Have robin. Second most is the western meadowlark. It has six <coughs> states that have western meadowlark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Connecticut is a robin. Yeah. All right, let's try another one. Okay, here's a good one. This is fun. You know James, John James Audubon? Mm -hmm. He lived to the age of 66. Name a year he was alive. Do a time. Anybody got a guess? 1831 is correct. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? 1820 is correct. So he was he was born in 1785 and he lived in 1851. Kind of puts it in perspective. Okay, which was the first bird ever protected by the U.S. government? We've got two now. Eagle is not. No, no. It is protected the national bird. It was a trumpeter swan in 1918. Well, the second one was the whooping crane in 1937. Passenger pigeon, California condor in 1967 was also protected. Kirtland's Werber in 1967. Peregrine falcon in 1973. And uh, the lesser prairie chicken in 2014. There was a burst of birds protected right around Earth Day. Uh, here's another one for you. The heath hen became extinct in 1932. Name one U.S. state that heath hen lived in. Yes, yes. Very good. Massachusetts, it was an East Coast bird, Atlantic Coast, Connecticut, Maryland, Rhode Island, New York, Delaware, Virginia. Oh, one more. Of these three birds, which which range extends farthest west? Eastern kingbird, eastern meadowlark, eastern bluebird. Farthest range west. What do you think? The meadowlark lives in Arizona, but it's not the one. Bluebird also extends into the Rocky Mountains, but it's not the one. Answer is? Kingbird. Kingbird goes all the way to Puget Sound. Oh. Almost all the way across. Mm. Yeah, it's called Eastern, but it goes all the way to Puget Sound. Yeah. <clears throat> Fun little game. All right, you can win it in every category there. Those are some different categories that we've uh, Where the birds are, uh, we'll do a little bit later. Try a couple of them. Treat yourself to a nice binocular. Now, I've never bought a Swarovski. I always fear when I get to the point when I could buy a Zeiss or a Swarovski, I take a birding trip instead. I, I can never get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> or a birding scope. You know any of these people? Maybe you're in that picture. This is Jagerfest at Wisconsin Point. How many people have been to Jagerfest? I was at the first one. <laughs> this is one of, this is probably the premier WSO event. And this is just why. You have 30 scopes lined up on the Lake Superior shore, and everybody's pointing out the birds for you. <laughs> there's a parasitic jagger. There's a there's a pomeranian. There's a Saturn's gull. I got a hair sparrow over here. So all you gotta do is just stand there and say, "Oh my, this is great." <laughs> Let's see all these great birds. Anybody remember Ted Kyle? He's in the little cap there in the middle of the little goatee, the red beard. This one? That's over part of that's Brian Brady, right? No, back one. Oh right yeah. There, yeah. Ted Kyle. Who's that? Ted Kyle. He was a student there. He's a bird. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you recognize some people. Uh, you see Daryl Tessin here, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Buy one field. This is my first field guide in 1969. That's what it looked like. Uh, this is, by the way, my current field guide. I don't know if you can see it, but this is it. 
<laughs> it, it's still good. As long as I keep it in the proper order, it's still got all the pages. It's wearing out, but I don't like his new guide as much. My second guide, I have another silly at home, but he signed it, so it doesn't go out of the house. So one day i got to get another one. Oh, I like, I like the Sibley art. I, I'm, I'm an art guy bird. I like that better than photography. photography. And I'm a photographer. So that's, that's fine. I'm also a painter, though. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, my uh, guide to Australia. I've never been to Australia. I have bird guides every continent just because, I, again, I'm a collector, I'm a lister, I just love them. I page through them. I sit sometimes at night and I just study the birds in the books. <laughs> Build a bird library, which might include such top flight volumes as H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald, or Under a Wild Sky by William Souter, or Living on the Wind by Scott Whitensall, or one of my books, <laughs> Sail Afterwards. <laughs> this is my library at home. I got a hundred bird books here, the top two shelves. These are all the destination guides. These are all scientific and uh, resource guides. These are other nature guides, and then it goes down to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame down here. <laughs> Get to know famous birds of literature. How many people know the name of the Taylor bird in Ricky Kippy Tommy? Rudyard Kipling's Ricky Kippy Tommy. Mm -hmm. Darcy is the name of the Taylor bird. How about this? How about this? I've got the um, Avian Pursuit page here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Who wrote The Ugly Duckling? Hans Christian Andersen. That's right. Danny. Um, which two birds did Noah send forth from the ark in search of land? What first, though? Didn't return. Remember, he sent one out first, didn't return. What was it? I'm sorry. It did return. It did return. The dove did not. The raven, except the raven on three. Yeah, that's right. According to Paul McCartney, what does Blackbird say? Dead of night. That's right. Very good. In the dead of night. Right? Bird poetry. Good or bad, what does it matter? Birds don't know the difference. My favorite bird. <coughs> Exiting the plane at Charleston, I beg the sky my favorite bird. Most coveted in picture books since the age of 11, but had it hung there above the rental cars and luggage carts, I'd have loved it less. Plotting marshes like a rail, combing cypress swamps and log lollies, stalking Kool-Aid colored finches and whispered songs of bashful sparrows, that spring like the sort of longing from fresh from earth Mid-40s, no child of yearning yet, <clears throat> searching for something that can't be nailed to earth. Seems I'm always looking for winged things <coughs> in rooted weeds. Last I drove the four lanes across the Santee to where mossy limbs pressed the fat, muddy water, half bloody with salt, and turning the car around like a gourd bowl, saw them appear as clouds out of boiled air. Parked in the middle of the bridge, I clutched through glass at three birds, skimming the treetops without flapping. Snowy wings trailing black, their forked tails reading supple currents like fingers floating a naked hip. Traffic coming, I'd have to lift like a kite away. The first three cleared the sleepy oaks, but a fourth snagged a dragonfly with one talon, and passing to its beak, ate in lazy bites aloft, as blessed it ascended into sun. <coughs> that actually describes my first encounter with a uh, small tail kite. It's the right mood, the right atmosphere, right? Yeah. <laughs> Blue jay. So bandit-eyed, so undove like a bird, to be my pastoral father's favorite, skulker and blusterer, whose every arrival is a raid. Love made the bird no gentler, nor him who loved less gentle. Still, still the wild blue feather brings my mild father. Robert Francis wrote that. And one more, the grackle. The grackle's voice is less than mellow. His heart is black. His eye is yellow. He bullies more attractive birds <coughs> with hoodlum deeds and vulgar words. And should a human interfere, attacks that human in the rear. <laughs> I cannot help but deem the grackle an ornithological debacle. <laughs> That's Ogden Nash written. Yeah. 
<laughs> Lots of good programming. So. <laughs> Compose a life list. This is my computer list. I remember when I was all having my hand on a notebook. Wow. <laughs> that was different. All right. This is my life bird I saw in Alaska. Anybody know what this is? This indistinct little bird is called an Arctic warbler. And I had two of them in the uh, willows and alders as I was hiking up this mountain stream, and, and they were, the brush was so thick, we actually chose to walk up the mountain stream in our boots rather than go through the brush, where I later got stung by the horns. Good thing, huh? Just mm -hmm. stuck to the creek. But this little Arctic warbler was one of a pair that was late in August, still hanging out. The odd thing about these birds is, you know how we have a migratory corridor that passes through the Americas, mm -hmm. back and forth from South America, Central America, North America? Well, this bird actually migrates from Alaska across to Russia, Russia. Mm -hmm. and down into the Philippines and Thailand and oh. Oh. Vietnam. Mm. And so this bird is a you know, Eurasian bird that bleeds over into Alaska. Instead of going south, the tropics goes that way. It's a completely mm. different migratory corridor. Very interesting. Uh, by the way, what I do, I love to do with my camera, is capture life moment because I'm pretty old. I'm, I'm 58. I can't remember the first time I saw a robin. You know, how, how, does, how do you do that? I can't remember the first time I ever saw a certain bird. So now I can't. This spring, I was driving in Cape Fear Canyon, and this bird was running up the middle of the road toward me. It's a Montezuma quail. Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. It sat there. Again, while I fumble for my camera and get it out the car driver window and snap these pictures, this odd-looking quail sat there. This is my moment when I first in my life ever encountered a species, mm. which is so cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Same thing for this. Oh. It's the red-billed trouser bird. I'm standing on top. Let me set this up for you guys. I'm on a 600-foot bluff in St. Lucia, looking over the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, on that side, and the other side is the Caribbean. And these birds are flying eye level in the wind. They're tail streamers mm. flying out behind them as they go back and forth. And the wind is just blowing like crazy. And I'm standing up there with Donald Anthony and the guy who's taking me up there and watching these birds go by. This is also in St. Lucia. It's a rose-throated solitaire. Now, I, I, I wish I could do this again. I wish I could go back to St. Lucia, but I'll never get back to I know I will never get back to this tropical rainforest for this bird one. I have one chance in my life. Donald, my guy, whistles twice. This bird flies down to within 15 feet of me where I get this picture. And it just sits there. <laughs> for about a count of 15 before it flies off again. Mm -hmm. So this beautiful bird he just makes this call and it goes and lands right there. And of course again it's like, oh, look at that. And then it was off again, I never saw it again. Mm -hmm. Rose throated solitaire. This is a black footed albatross behind one of the Deb Shearwater uh, flag trips, landing in the water to get the fish she's chumming, she's throwing out. Huge bird, wingspread of about uh, nine feet, ten feet. Mm -hmm. Monstrous bird. Mm. And this is a Buller Shearwater, same trip. Mm. Birds you'll never see, well, probably never see from land. This one's an amazing bird. This bird was a nemesis bird. It's a Lawrence's goldfish. Yeah. I had gone to California. I had gone to Arizona. I had gone to places looking for this bird. Places where they describe this bird being went all over the place. I pull up to this park, and I look in this puddle. Again, I'm in my car, and there they are. <laughs> so I'm snapping these pictures of these birds at this puddle, grabbing this mud. And not only is a light bird moment again, but I've got it captured. The only time in my life I've ever seen these birds. Mm -hmm. This is in uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, 18 pound of group. This is a yellow-winged tanager. Mm -hmm. eating the fruits in that tree. Mm -hmm. This is copious right there. Start a state list, or many state lists, or a yard list. I just got number 106, a Lincoln Sparrow, appropriately named for the Lincoln Center, in my <laughs> yard this week. A list of your favorite birds or most wanted birds. This is my most wanted list. I, I've yet to go to the coast of Nova Scotia or Maine, and so a lot of the birds I haven't seen are, are there. Dove keys, Atlantic puffins, razor bills. I've never been to Arizona in July with some of those hummingbirds hanging out. Identify 100 species of birds in a single day. It's a game I love to play. These are all warblers. Tempt a big bee, big green bird in year. It's a very uh, uh, um, popular thing to do now. You count only the birds you get under your own power. You either walk out or bike out from your house. I don't know, can you take a bus? No. <laughs> but 
you don't use fossil fuel, I think it's eight. <coughs> Take a bird quiz online. This thing uh, is actually the birders uh, certification. You can go online, you can do sight or sound, and they test you. They will play these kind of sometimes hard to hear uh, natural soundscapes, and you have to identify as many birds as you can hear in three minutes, and it tests you for your skill level. I've actually applied for jobs, so this is the job application. <laughs> Before this, I took a job with Minnesota DNR, and she put me in a room with a tape player and played uh, 85 birds on a tape, and I got three wrong in that one. <laughs> but that was because she threw a summer tanager in there, and I, at that time I didn't know summer tanagers until I got my wall clock. And then <laughs> she put a hummingbird on, I'm sorry, she put a uh, waxwing on there and the tape was so bad, I thought it was like the wings of a hummingbird, I don't know what it was, so I guess that might, I don't know what the third one was, I think it was still more of a citizen scientist, this would, Technical issues, we're stuck. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm stuck. eBird. How many people hear eBird? This is very good. This is very good. If you eBird, you not only help out the Breeding Bird Atlas, but you go online and you record your birds, it keeps the list for you. All you got to do is go down the checklist and get, and then every time you come back, it keeps a list for you. How many birds you've seen in that spot, how many birds you've seen in that state, how many birds you've seen in that county, how many birds you've seen here. Any way you want it, all your lists are cut for you, and you're helping scientists out keep track of where bird ranges are. Very good. I, I, I recommend everybody use that. My first college course in ornithology was with Dr. Howard Young in lacrosse. He loved to uh, stump people. Um, one of the questions I still remember that I got wrong in his test was, are there hummingbirds in South America? And I was, you know, 20 years old. And this time, I'm, of course, there are hummingbirds in South America. But that, he just pulled that out of the air. Are there hummingbirds in South America? I don't know. I got it wrong. There were, yeah. <laughs> Get a bird song CD and play it until you've memorized it or been evicted. <laughs> <laughs> this is worth it. We talked about this, John Bates, uh, one of uh, his uh, CDs. I have them also for sale, uh, John and I. I helped produce the video version. This is my video on it. Learn bird songs and perform them. All right, this is fun. I love mnemonics, the idea of mnemonics, learning bird mm -hmm. places. Do you know what the song of bald eagles or called the bald eagle is? It's very simple. It goes, <laughs> very high pitch. <laughs> the brown creeper. I invented a mnemonic for this. It's very background hard, but it's, see, sweetie, he's so see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like sound, see, sweetie, he's so see. See, sweetie, he's so <laughs> Tinny, a lot of these sounds in This is one of my favorites. I invented this mnemonic for the house finch. It's a very complicated song, but if you know it, I want you to repeat it for me. Which is the year? Which is the year? Of the rich Wichita. Of the rich Wichita. Itchy year. It's 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 year. So you got to say it really fast. Which is the year of the rich Wichita? Itchy year. Which is the year of the rich Wichita? Itchy year. And that's what it sounds like. You've got a lot of ear sounds and a lot of, a lot of that itchy, 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 itchy sound. Which is the year of the rich Wichita? Itchy year. Summer tanager. Now, of course, if you have the clock, you know this one. <laughs> Meet the Greek. Reheat to eat. Feed it to Peter. <laughs> That's how you know summer tanager. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If I were to play this, and you hear them in the field, that's exactly what they're saying. You laugh the next thing you hear. Meet the Greek. Reheat to eat. Feed it to Peter. Whistle. You know, it's a whistle song. Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> and this is another mnemonic that I invented. This one drove me crazy because uh, uh, Ruby Crown Pino is a really hard complicated song, but it really breaks down into these three or four parts. It goes, it starts out with this D, 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 and it goes, check, 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 check. It goes, dear, 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 and it, goes, and it ends with double D, double D, double D, double D, it goes, D, 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 check, 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 it goes chirp, 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 quick, 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 chirp, 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 quick, 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 chirp, 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 quick, 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 Very loud warbler song. With that kind of pendulum swing with a loud thing. Very unwarbler like song. Learn how to call owls. All right, we're going to do a little practice. A little. Here's the song. Here's the call of a great, great owl. It goes like this. It goes, ooh, 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 ooh. It's lower like that. Very loud drum. How about this guy? You know the bar at all, right? Oh, who can hear me? I'm going to take it. 
imitate any turkey hunters in the group? Anybody imitate a fire doll? Very good. And the <laughs> mnemonic for that is? What's the mnemonic for that? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? So it's, I find it's better if you suck in and you go, And you do this at the end, they say, Have you heard that part of your camping? Sure. <laughs> you want to like duck in your tent and hide in sleeping bags because you don't know what it is. It's not like somebody's screaming. Also, <laughs> can you imitate that? Huh? Can you imitate? Oh, good, good grief, no. But, but I sure listen to them. They, they do have barks and squats, right? Yeah. Sometimes not the whole Great horn doll. You know that one? Males and females are different. Mm -hmm. The female goes like four or five times, and the male goes seven to nine times, so the male goes. Maybe a little lower. Yeah. Try that one. <laughs> so let's try the bar now. Don't be afraid, you're in a crowd. Nobody can see you. Start. <laughs> part of the state coming through about now. It sounds like you take a spoon and hit a plate, you go. <coughs> and you just keep doing it. I'm a bad whistler. Try that one once you can whistle. Alright, now breaking the ridge bridge over the river quad. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> I thought I'd try. This one's interesting. I've never seen this bird. I've heard it five times. It's a flammulated owl. It's like a saw, it's only that big, but it goes. So, this is a classic example. You're in Arizona or Colorado or New Mexico, and you're in, out in the dark, and you're looking for a, a flammulated owl, and you hear over here, you're. And all of a sudden, and you're trying to get a flashlight, and all of a sudden, over here, that's, that's all you get. Good luck. <laughs> no, one. They just keep flying around in the dark and you never see them. All right, so we're going we're to try this. We're going to do a little owl chorus, all right? This half here, in fact, let's see, who's a good whistler? Raise your hand, you're a good whistler. Who was whistling before? I heard people whistling. All right. You guys are our saw wet owls. Right here, in the front row. All right? You people are barred owls, all right? Remember how barred owls look, right? All right, practice, please. All right, do the great horn notes. All right, bar notes. Great horn notes. Saw wet All right, here's the problem. The big owls eat the smaller owls, so don't call me if you want to be safe and you want to make it through the night. The big right the owls are the tigers of the sky. They even eat skunks, they're that bad. There's no sense of smell. And that's how people, scientists actually find great horned owl nests by the smell of the, the skunk crust sometimes. That's how they locate them. Yeah, because they have no sense of smell. All right, let's try this one. This is even more fun. We call this the white crown chorus. I gotta divide you into two halves again, right down the middle this time. We don't have to do three. All right, so this half is one half, this half is the other. All right, and this is what you gotta do. Heard, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. If you do it like this, you go, this half is gonna do it like this, right? And, and we're practicing with you. Heard, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Try it. Heard, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Again. Heard, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. That's basically the mnemonic for a white crown sparrow. A little more complicated notes, but if you know that, you recognize the pattern. Now this one's going to go up a little higher. We go, bird, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Try it. Bird, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Remember the lower one? Bird, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Bird, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. All right. Got it? Here we go. Ready? I'm the conductor. I'm the director. Here we go. Bird, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Again. Bird, seen, seen, sweet, sweet bird. Ready? 
Heard, sing, sing, sweet, sweet bird. 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 Keep it going, everybody. Sing, sing, sweet, sweet bird. Heard, sing, sing, sweet, sweet bird. You do that a few hundred times, you'll never forget. The song of the white cone spirit. I promise you, folks. That's how you practice in the monastery. All right, I want to see one more time, see if I get this to play. This is another story I did. And this one is especially appropriate because mm -hmm. I held, let's try it. Gregor Perry Chicken is a true showbird, a born performer. But the courtship between male and female birds is best appreciated when explained by seasoned observers. <laughs> demonstrate the greater prairie chickens which you have right here at the Buena Vista. It's really fun because they do uh, they do such a good job of imitating the birds that it's hilarious. Alright, no time. But that is, by the way, this is the website for WSO and these are for a TV episodes. So if you do want to see this one, all you have to do is go online to the WSO site and look up I'm in the mood for love. That's one of the <laughs> It also sharp tailed grouse in. And uh, both of those are very entertaining. The one, uh, the sharp-tailed grouse were taped at uh, Pershing Wildlife Area in Clark County and the greater prairie chicken at Buena Vista. Oh, All right, cool. Technical help, please. Hey, John, get the power back. Let's try this. John, can you help me? There we go. Pick out the bird sounds in movies, TV, radio. You know what the most popular, commonly used bird in commercials is? Loon. What? Red tail hawk is one kind. Of. Who else said? Loon is pretty common. Loon is common. Those are not correct. Do you know what it is? It is the morning warbler. Oh, really? The tweet tweet tweedle, tweet 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 tweedle is the most common. I have heard them in dozens of commercials, mm -hmm. and for some reason, there's a sound guy out in California that that has a store of these. And whenever somebody says, "I need a good bird sound," they come to this guy. And he says, "I got just the one for you. Here it is." <laughs> so in every commercial, I've seen it in commercials for race cars. I've seen it in commercials for dog food. I've seen it in commercials for Scott's lawn fertilizer. They play this bird. Now, I'm a horrible one to go to the movie with because my wife will say, we'll be watching The Sixth Sense, and I'll go, that bird is not in Philadelphia. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're playing a dick sizzle. There's a dick sizzle. Bruce Willis is walking in downtown Philadelphia, and there's a dick sizzle calling. Right. <laughs> there are really bad movies, and they're really good movies. Um, they, do that, they do that with, they'll show an eagle and play a red tail. That's yes, right. Yes. That's real common. That's right. Uh, there's the movie uh, Deliverance. Yes. Horrible, violent movie. Bird sounds are all accurate. From Georgia, <laughs> wherever they are, Tennessee, wherever they are, the bird sounds are, are perfect. And they have the actual wood brushes and, and all the birds that are, are, are in that area. Uh, subscribe to Bird Watching, Wild Bird, Bird Watchers Digest, or Birds and Blooms. Or join the Audubon or the Sierra Club. Oh, you already did that. Good for you. Join the a ABA, the American Birding Association. Or the Wisconsin Society for Ornithology. How about this? Any of you in there? Spot yourself in there? <laughs> this is an annual convention photo. Where was this taken? Anybody remember where this was taken? Very shame. Very shame. Talk about birds to large groups of people in Stevens Point. Yeah. 
Start up the Bird Watchers Party. Throw a bird party. Become the founder of the Bird Scouts of America. <laughs> you ever hear about this one? April 8th. Every April 8th this was started. This is Draw a Bird Day. Now, I started doing this just last year, but this is just fun. On April 8th, you write in a calendar and you just draw a picture of a bird to celebrate the fact that this kid, um, this Dory Cooper, did this and inspired this event. You can read more about it. Come on. Carver Paper. This is one of my paintings I'm working on. This is a bunch of warblers flying. Uh, you can see just about every type is in there. This is a segment of the painting. Photograph birds. This is an evening grosbeak. Photographed in Santa Fe of all places. This is a young northern shrike. I photographed in Denali National Park. I, like I said, I have a cannon with 400 lens. This is a Paraki dozing in South Texas. Black turn and horicon. This is the kestrel at Quivira, off the car window, just sitting looking at it. Uh, a male in perfect light just sitting there. This is a northern fulmar off the boat. They have a shearwater tour in um, Bodega Bay. And this is a, a sooty shearwater in Monterey Bay, a green jay in mm -hmm. Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge. Mm -hmm. A Franklin's gull at Quivira. Mm -hmm. An Audubon's oriole in Salonino, Texas. Mm -hmm. The black oyster catcher in the coast of California. A crested caracara in South Texas. A vermilion fly catcher at Bosque del Apache. And a Costas hummingbird in Sun City, Arizona, where my in-laws spend the winter. Videotape birds and birders. Adopt a bird, symbolically, of course. Go bird banding. Great way to learn about birds, especially if you have kids. Take them, and you can, the bird banding will allow you to uh, hold the bird and release it. The kids from the hand. Sometimes see these tricks where they take the bird and lay it on the kid's head or upside down in their hand, and then the bird realizes it's free and then flutters away. <laughs> Keep cats indoors. Very <laughs> important. Vote birds. Now, I would never tell anybody how to vote. <laughs> but there are issues that we all know are important and they affect birds. And for the longest time, you know, we have ignored climate change. <laughs> this is like me up here. <laughs> I won't say anything about politics. I'll just show you a couple cartoons. Maybe the cartoonists get it, huh? Mm -hmm. Contribute to the Nature Conservancy is a great cause. It, you know, one of the things I find, when money matters, money talks. You put your money where they buy up habitat for birds. Mm -hmm. What could be better for birds than that? Be a defender of wildlife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel sorry for that cat. Who let it out anyway? Yeah. Appraise the value of birds. Decide which is more, a bird in the hand or a bird in the bush. Here's a saw wet owl that was banded and being released by hand. Spread the good word about birds. It's a lilac roller. African bird. Dream bird. Make your own list of 101 ways to inject more birds into your life and start checking things off that list. Hurry, folks. Like you should. Pull in any other ingredients of joy, satisfaction, or enrichment than you can possibly think of. Strive to hold cupped in your soul the colors of birds, the pleasure of birds, the gift of birds, because what is this life? But a brief, beautiful flight, a lust for home and light and sustenance graced by the song of birds. Mm -hmm. How do I love thee? love thee? With each morning, with each dawning, with each feather, season or note, with the measure of each of the countless birds of my life. I'm Steve Vegetable, and I'm in love with birds. Thank you very much. Like I said, afterwards I have my books for sale, both Make Birds Not War and uh, 50, um, I'm sorry, all this and Robins too. And I have John Case, Case. Oh, by the way, here are, if anybody needs resources for finding some of the things, I've printed them out. They're going to be right here. In fact, if you put them in the back here, you can pick them up on the way out. Um, any questions? I won't change questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
You get to get little cards printed off that say, you know, I'm a bird watcher, I ate here, I stayed here. And that's a good way to tell people because birds are a silent population. We're not noisy like ATV riders or hunters. <laughs> and so a bird can slip in and out, and somebody says, no, I, I mean, I, I'm shy. I take my binoculars off when I go into the restaurant so they don't see the binoculars. They don't know I'm a bird. But yet I'm contributing to the local economy in big ways. A lot of places are lodge, and I think where I buy gas. Any other questions?